I was tunneling through my garage the other day when my neighbor, Alfonso P. Finley, popped in, demanding to know the whereabouts of his lawnmower. What a mess! Are you afraid of being buried in an avalanche in here? Don't raise your voice so loud. Sound vibrations can sometimes trigger a slide over the rafters. Also, I'd prefer it if you didn't follow me now. I'm looking for a saw. You'll never find it in here. It's a table saw. Maybe it's one of those canoes. Give me a hand and we'll move the canoe to the side. I didn't come here to help you eviscerate your garage. I just want my lawnmower. Maybe it's under the canoes too. As Finley and I lifted the top canoe, he clumsily bumped a paddle, which knocked into some tent poles, which in turn dislodged an amorphous yellow blob from the top of my fishing cabinet. Whitewater Fever, from The Night of the Bear Ate Goomba, by Patrick F. McManus. The blob plummeted down, enveloping Finley. No need for concern. These old World War II surplus life rafts are pretty tough. I don't even hurt one with your head. Yeah, nasty. A life raft, you say? Don't tell me you actually trusted your life with this thing on the water. Oh, yes, indeed. Rex Sweeney and I were among the pioneer river rafters of the Pacific Northwest. Haven't used it in a while, though. 25 years, in fact. The last time I used the raft was when Rex Sweeney, his dog Smarts, and I had shot the chicken out narrows in the middle of the night. We hadn't intended to shoot the narrows in the middle of the night, or any other time for that matter. We were unfamiliar with the river, but people who knew it had told us to Watch out for the narrows. Assuming we had already passed the danger spot, a timid shoot of water, Ratch and I decided to float out of the canyon when expecting nothing more than a serene moonlit float down to the takeout spot. The dog smarts stupidly went along with the plan. Years later, I returned to the narrows to observe them in the daylight, I discovered a channel cut in a twisting, dropping course down through solid rock so narrow that a raft could reach out and touch both sides simultaneously. There was nothing left to indicate the magnitude of our terror as we were sucked through the narrows in the dark of that dreadful night. Except the marks where four sets of human fingernails and a pair of dog claws had scratched along the granite walls. I was surprised to see that the scratch marks had already eroded away till they were now scarcely an eighth of an inch deep. The experience took a lot out of his marks. Afterwards, he went about with an empty look and a wild and haunted stare. The only residual effects Ratch and I suffered were that we stuttered over the word narrows and went about for some time with a look of absolute horror frozen on our faces. This was particularly embarrassing at dinner parties. Oh my, what is it? A hostess would ask. Is there a soup? No, ma'am, it's just the, 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 the narrows. For 25 years, I had blocked the narrows and the raft out of my consciousness, and now it had plopped down on Finley, as if once again vying for my attention. You know what? You, Rich Sweeney, and I should haul this raft up the St. Joe and have ourselves a little float trip. Nothing risky or anything, just a pleasant little one-day float down a gentle river. Ah, you must be mad to think that I, for even one moment, would consider floating a river with that stupid, ugly thing. Well, sure, it's a little ugly now, but once it's inflated, it looks pretty good. I was referring to Sweeney, but ditto your raft. <laughs> Driving up along the St. Joe, with the raft lashed to the roof of the car, Rach and I couldn't help but chuckle at how Alfin had ridiculed our little adventure. Rach mimicked Finley's shrill voice. A water he raised, that's what I'd expect from your little float trip. <laughs> and what was it that he was saying about floating a river with us? I said I would have to be completely out of my mind to float a river with you two. What possessed me to come along, I'll never know. It was your spirit of adventure. Also, you wanted to hear all the bad things we'd say about you. Yes, well, I would like to think 
that you would at least speak decently of a person suffering from temporary insanity. <laughs> Look, Finley, this is nothing more than a simple little float trip. Not much more exciting than playing with your rubber duck in a tub. You want excitement? Ha! You should have floated with us in the old days. That was excitement. And terror. Yeah, terror. I told Gretchen Finley about a recent float I'd taken with my friend, Peter Grubb. Peter's lecture on safety lasted almost as long as the trip. I was particularly, particularly attentive to Peter's instructions on what to do when it tossed over the raft. <clears throat> Lying your back with your legs pointed downstream while backstroking with your arms. This varied somewhat from my own method, which consisted of arming the fence that could along the surface of the water. Tell me that again. <laughs> uh, I did. Also, Peter introduced me to some greatly rank equipment, like these little electric pumps that run off a car battery and can inflate a raft in about three minutes. It used to take us hours to pump up a raft with just a tire pump. <laughs> Mostly, though, Peter's a safety fanatic. He says he never runs a river without scouting it first. That's what we're doing, Finley. Scouting the river from the road. Indeed. Well, how about where the river curves away from the road and goes into the canyon? Shouldn't we stop and scout that? Don't be a sissy, Finley. Why would there ever be in that canyon that it's not doing here? <laughs> An hour later, we were floating down the river. I took up the captain's position in the bow. Wretch paddled from the stern, and Finley sprawled in the middle of the raft, doing his impression of a limp wash rag. <sighs> I thought you said they didn't have one of those electric craft inflators. <sighs> nope, still just a tire pump. But you'll get the hang of it once you pump off the raft a few more times. I thought you were starting to catch your rhythm towards the end there. The float was about what we expected, the gentle bobbing motion of the raft, birds twittering along the bank. I popped the tap of a can of diet root beer as we pleasantly floated away from the road and into the canyon. What's that noise? Sounds like a train. Surely the train doesn't Run through this canyon. Sounds like a train rapping. Almost reminds me of the. We swept around the next bend. We were picking up momentum. And then we saw why. It was getting a run at a series of high hurdles and a high jump, followed by a pole vault. We, we plummeted down the edge of the pole vault. I glanced back to see if Wretch and Finley were still on board. They both had their mouths stretched wide open. I think they may have been screaming. I turned to see what they might be screaming about and discovered that the river had thrust itself straight up into a towering wall of water, curling back to the top. We swooped up under the curve and hung there. At that moment, I noticed that the wave was fairly thin on near the top, so I popped my head through and took a look downstream. The next 50 yards looked like more of the same. But after that, though, the river turned mean. Two years later, we emerged from the canyon. Wretch was gasping for air. Hinley was lying on his back, with his legs pointed downstream, backstroking with his arms. Knock it off, Hinley. You're still on the raft. What? We're alive? I can't believe it. Now let this be a lesson to you. Always scout a river before you float it. How many times do I have to tell you? Everybody okay? I'm fine. Swallowed about five gallons of water is all. But that shouldn't bother me none. I'm alright, I think. I've got this big lump in my throat. Probably just from fear. On the other hand, it could be a can of diet root beer. <laughs> How do <are> you <laughs> My face feels funny. Anything wrong with my face? 
You've just got to look eventually poor frozen eyes. It'll wear off in a couple of weeks. <laughs> just stay away from dinner parties in the meantime. <laughs>